There are lots of scary stories out in the big wide world of the internet saying that some commercially produced products out there contain some extremely dangerous chemicals and they should be banned or avoided or it's all some big conspiracy. And when you mix a little truth with the story, it can really be quite disturbing. But for the real truth, you have to look at what happens when chemicals mix and bond together to form compounds. There are many chemicals in your body some of which, in their pure form, could easily kill you. The reason they don't is down to compounds. Now, two of these elements are chlorine and sodium. Now, chlorine was used as a poison gas during the First World War. Yet, when it's chemically bonded to sodium, it becomes salt, which, in excessive amounts, may give you high blood pressure, but it isn't going to kill you by sniffing an open bottle of the stuff. This is because two or more elements chemically bond to each other, the properties of the resultant chemical can be radically different to the chemical properties of the elements or the chemical used to create it. Hydrogen and oxygen are both gases, yet when they're combined, you get water. Carbon and hydrogen, a solid and a gas, can be combined to get methane, propane and butane, all gases which can all be ignited. But just because something contains an element that can be dangerous doesn't mean that the compound the element forms together is dangerous. But also doesn't mean that normally safe element is always safe. Two of the commonest and generally safest elements are carbon and nitrogen. Yet you can combine these two together to get cyanide. So the risk presented by chemicals generally isn't the elements themselves, but what specific compounds these elements form and what possible or probable compounds they may form either in the environment or within the human body as they're broken down or react with other chemicals. So unless you know precisely what a chemical structure is and how it operates, just stating that a food, medicine or a vaccine contains a particular chemical and therefore it must be dangerous is blatantly wrong. Now, whilst I consider myself well versed in chemistry than the average person in the street and certainly better informed than more con conspiracy theorists out there it's not possible for me to tell you if a particular chemical compound out of the thousands that are routinely used are safe indeed what the daily consumption rate would represent a risk to health there are just too many chemicals out there and too many possible reactions sometimes you do actually have to trust the scientists and the regulatory authorities who are the experts in the field, who've done all the tests and the experiments, and it's just somebody with a wild theory. However, with that being said, there are two elements which are often wheeled out as being toxic in things like vaccines. One of these is mercury, which for the last 15 years hasn't been generally used in Western vaccines. And even when it is used, you need 40 injections every single day to build up a harmful level of mercury in your system because just as such a tiny amount is actually being used in each vaccine. The other thing is aluminium which in extremely high levels can be dangerous to human health but again you get about 10 times more aluminium from your average daily food intake than you can get from a single injection. You're more at risk from a drinks can than you are from an injection when it comes to aluminium. So, unless it's in a properly peer-reviewed research paper from a chemist who's done intensive study into all the actions of a particular chemical, ignore it. Scare stories about various chemicals being dangerous normally have their origins people trying to sell you their own snake oil remedy rather than in any attempt to keep you or the general public safe.